name. Hallelujah.
lift up your hands and honor the Lord. All day long, let, let, let's spend time with Jesus. Let's spend time worshiping the Lord. Let's spend time giving Him thanks. Give Him praise and glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Shake somebody's hand. Jesus. All day long my lips shall utter praise. All day long my heart and my soul be lifted. All day long. Let us turn to the word of God please from the book of St. Luke the 14th chapter Verses 15 through 24. And we will see what the Lord will say to us through these verses. Luke 14, 15 through 24. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them, I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being hungry, said unto his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city. And bring in either the poor and the maimed and the halts and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and edges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bitten shall taste of my supper. Gracious Father, we bow in the name of Jesus Christ and ask you now to pour upon us the rich anointing for the proclamation of your word. Let the anointing of God be strong, let it be rich, so that the lost among us will be saved. The backsliders will be reclaimed. The saints of God will be strengthened. And each person, O oh God, who hears this word shall be ministered to according to their particular need. Touch your servant and make this message sent as it is designed by you, we pray in your precious name. Amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Praise God. I want to minister to us today on a little theme. When I look at the three categories of persons who were called and the excuses that were made and the interest that they had 
outside of entering upon the great supper to which they were invited, I want to look at their interests. So we want to consider the field, the flock, the family. But what about the fellowship? The field, the flock, the family, those were their interests. But the master had invited them to share fellowship. So you would have noticed that their interest took precedence over the master's invitation for fellowship. The field and the flock could well represent the economic situations of people's lives, their daily bread. And so you could easily say concern for their daily bread superseded their interest in fellowship. The family represents the social life. And so you could say the social life, the family matters, also took precedence over the time of fellowship. Now, I want to bring a spiritual application to this message. I want to see the house of God as the place for corporate fellowship. And I want to see the Lord Jesus Christ as the great man that made the great feasts and invited all persons to come to his house to feast and to fellowship. But those to whom the invitation was sent had other interests. They were concerned about their bread and butter. They were concerned, secondly, about their social lives. The field, the flock, and the family to the neglect of spiritual feasting and spiritual fellowship. I'm sure you see where I intend to go. There is no question, my brothers and sisters, if we should concern ourselves with the material things of life. Jesus did not say man doth not live by bread, but please remind that he said, Man shall not live by bread alone. So the bottom line is, if we place our efforts and our energies and our concentration on bread alone, to the neglect of spiritual bread, Jesus would say, your priority is not ordered properly. He would say, you need to strike a balance. Oh, praise God. I want you to know that the church house, wherever they are, every single one of them can be packed to capacity regardless of their size if people as a whole had greater interest in spiritual things. Are you not with me? We seem to spend more time concerning ourselves about the material things of life, the social aspect of life, to the neglect of the spiritual things. The field, the flock, and the family, we cannot come to feast and to fellowship. We have before us a wonderful story. And this wonderful story, from all intent and purpose, was designed to fulfill a particular mission. It was more than just designed to bring people together. 
When we come to the house of God, it is more than bringing people together. There are many places in which we can gather. There are many forums in which we could meet. But this is a very special meeting. This is a gathering that is designed by God to fulfill a particular purpose in your life and mine that no other gathering can fulfill. Oh, you're not with me? Well, sit down tight. I'm not in any haste. You just sing all day long I've been with Jesus. So all morning long you can stay with me. Oh Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Verses 16 and 17 show in what place the great supper was called. Let's look at the verses 16 and 17. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come for all things are ready. They needed not to make any preparation. The man that put on the supper ensured that everything was in place. Oh, praise God. I believe when Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions, I want to bring a spiritual dimension to that and a temporal dimension to that. When we come to the house of God and begin to fellowship and the windows of heavens are open, just about everything that we need, we can receive from the hand of Almighty God. Many mansions, many compartments, all kinds of blessings are in the house of God. Hallelujah! When Paul said, for my God shall supply, not some of your needs, but all your needs according to his riches and glory. By Christ Jesus, Paul was saying, he has more than enough. Tell your neighbor he has more than what you need. Oh, praise God. We're not serving a pauperized God. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein is not your world and my world. It's God's world. It's not the businessman's world, the economist's world, the politician's world. It is God's world. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. What was intended at this great feast? They were invited for a time of fellowship and feasting. And that's why we come here time after time. Tell somebody we come to fellowship and we come to feast. Jesus said, I am the living bread. Heat of me and you shall live. Oh, praise God. Give me bread when I come to the house of God. Let me leave here feel like I've been with Jesus. Whether it be all night long or one or two hours, when I walk through the door, let me feel and know that indeed I have been in the presence of Almighty God. Let something happen in my life. I feel, I feel that I can't feel when I go anywhere else. Let me leave here knowing quite well that I've been in touch with heaven. And things are going to work for my good. Lift your hand and say, feed me, feed me. Glory. In the natural, that was a wonderful social engagement. In the natural. It's wonderful when people can get together for fellowship. Some people can't tolerate anybody else because they are at war with themselves. Are oh, you not with me here? 
And because they are at war with themselves, they are also at war with other people. But when you have a loving spirit and meet with people who are of a loving spirit and your fire is kindled and their fire is kindled, dear God, you don't want to leave out of that fellowship. Hallelujah! When you get in a church where the anointing is and people love Jesus, living right, living clean, heaven on the mind, their God is the best place you could ever be. Somebody praise God and give him thanks. David said, I was glad. Some people, when you tell them about church, they get sad because they don't understand church. But David said, when I got the invitation, I was glad because I know what God's house is all about. I know that in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. I know that church is not a bored place. I know that church is not giving you down syndrome. I know that church will lift you up, turn you around, plant your feet and now your ground. I know that church is a wonderful place. I was glad. Aren't you glad you're here this morning? Wave your hand and give Jesus thanks. Give him praise. Come on, shame the devil. Some of you don't say nothing as yet. Shame the devil. He didn't want you to come this morning. Say, Satan, I come. And you can't do nothing about it. Your headache couldn't stop me. Your tiredness couldn't stop me. The pain in my body couldn't stop me. Dear God Almighty, I am here to feast and to fellowship in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah! Glory. Hold on. Hold on. Take your time. Don't let people, some people, who do not have the joy of the Lord in their hearts, turn you off because of their behavior. Don't let some church people who act as though every day they are under the blues. Every day Dr. VT would say monkeys on their back. Every day they are baptized in lemon juice. Every day they are sad and grumpy and miserable. Don't let them turn you off. Nothing wrong with the church. Something wrong with them. Some of you don't want me to preach the truth. Is you something wrong with? Come on, praise him down there. I'm talking the truth. If you follow some people who go to church, Like they are under pressure. Man, you must be glad and joyful. Singing and shouting and praising God. And happy that the church you're going. is not club you're going. is church. It's not dance hall you're going. is church. It's not racetrack you're going. is church. It's not lotto line you're going to join. is church. Lift your hand and say church. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah! A place of fellowship! A place of feasting! Wow. Give him praise. Thank you, Lord. So, <laughs> this certain man who made those arrangements seem to have pulled out all the stops a function second to none come on somebody everything is in place el numero uno number one in town red car
carpet is spread. Fatlin cough is killed. The best chef in town. Talk to me, somebody. The best florist in town. Hallelujah. Beautiful setting. And he simply said to the people, Come. Come feast and fellowship. Are you with me? Lord, have mercy. Wave your hand and say something. Listen. You'll be surprised to know where some people's interests lie. You'll be surprised to know. The whole story told, I don't know if it's true, I just heard them. Sometimes people say things about when God created man and he come to black man, black man peep and see God. And God said, what do you want? He said, nothing, sir. And run away. So my man get, don't get anything. And other people say they wanted something. But this is one black man when our peep and run. They want something. Oh, you're not with me? You don't want nothing? Well, David wanted something. It's David said, my cup must be full. I'm running over. Lift your hand and say, fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. Fill it up. Fill it with joy. Fill it with peace. Fill it with blessing. Fill it with prosperity. Fill it with success. Fill it up to the overflow. I want something from God. Hallelujah. I want something. And I'm not going to let the field and the flock and the family keep me away from the fellowship that God has called me unto. Oh, glory to God. To this feast, many were invited. Many persons were invited. Fortunately or unfortunately, they did not show. Because had they showed up, then the maimed and the blind and the halt and the withered would not find a place. Are you not with me? But God still moves in mysterious ways. One thing I know for sure, the feast will be furnished with guests. One thing I know for sure, the house of God will always have people to hold the strain. It will always have prayer mothers, always have preachers, always have musicians, always have choir members, always have people. The good man said, go anywhere you can and bring whomever you find. Because my house must be full. The feast must have guests. Lift your hand and say, I will be in the house. Are you not with me here? People running away from God's church these days. Running away. Because some the world is enticing them. Some all kinds of pressure of life working against them. And they are walking away from God. But we got some Ruth in the house of God. Am I talking to somebody? We got some sister Ruth and some brother Ruth. Who will say entreat me not to leave thee. Not to return from following thee. Although pressure of life is on you. Although the enemy fighting you left, right and center. Although all hell is coming against you. But your mind is made up. You will not turn back. You got heaven on your mind. Although you can't take this one and that one and the other one. They get on your nerve from time to time. But because you got Jesus on your mind, you are going forward. Onward, Christian soldier. Marching us to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Hallelujah! Tell the devil you ain't going nowhere. Hallelujah! When the devil wants to mess us up, he tries to get us out of God's presence. 
Are you not with me here? Because in church, when the anointing of God is on your life, Satan can't get the victory over you. You are a thorn in his flesh. Hallelujah! But when he gets you out of the presence of God, he make all kind of mess up your life. But tell him, I'm going nowhere. I'm going nowhere. I'm here to stay. Praise him, praise him. Glory. Let's try and get some of this message in because time is gone. And so, all the specially invited guests had other interests. Are you with me? Other interests. Dear God. You know, I could preach this message in different ways. But they had other interests. Engagement that took the first person to his field. I have to go look about my daily bread. In America today, our Caribbean people, Christian, when they go to America, some of them at least, they do not settle for one job. They are looking for two and three and even four jobs if they can. And some of my wonderful brethren from this very church, some of them only go to church maybe once in three, four months. Live on the job. And when you check them out, their spiritual juice is gone. They live on the job. And it's not that many of them could not live, survive, make a good life with a good job that some have. But they want so much. And so they put aside their church duties, put aside the time for fellowship and feasting, and gone to the field. Are you not with me? And that is creeping in Jamaican society, little by little. Sunday is becoming a highly commercialized day. Are you with me? Businesses are opening up, especially under the name of Flexi Work Week. Amen. The week starts any day now. Come on, somebody. The devil is trying to do everything to keep the people of God out of good, clean Christian fellowship. When Jesus said, do not forsake the assembling of yourself together. Come together because the day fast approaching. The enemy is working out other strategies to keep us out of the fellowship. So he engages people in the field. Are you with me? What are the fields of your life today that have caused you to be, amen, staying away from the house of God? What are your fields? Where do you go? Places that could have stayed, but you choose to go rather than to come to the house of God. What is your field? I don't know. You not in church this morning. I have no plan to be in church watching me on this television network. What is your field? What's your field? The master calls for feast and fellowship in his house. And you sent an excuse to the master. In spite of all things are in place, I cannot come. I'm going to my field. What's your field, choir? Do you have some fields that they keep you away from church, from choir rehearsal, from the kind of commitment? You better be careful of those fields because those fields will deny you feasting and fellowshipping in the house of God. And if that goes, just about everything is gone. I 
must go to my fields. Are you with me? Verse 18, and they with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go see it, I pray thee. Have the excuse. That's the field. Dear God Almighty. You know, the master will not take any excuses, you know. Because he doesn't make suggestions, he gives command. Are you with me? Give Pastor Davis all the excuses you can. But don't give Jesus any. Well, God understands. Let me tell you, Pastor, he's here understand than God. Let me tell you why. God works by a particular standard which he cannot lower. He cannot change. And if he has a requirement for you and for me, he will take no excuse why we don't meet his requirement. Pastor will say, yes, sister, I understand. I understand. Being human, but where God is concerned, we have to come up. Tell somebody, come up, come up, come up. Oh no. Let's move on. He went to his field. No time for the feast. No time for the fellowship. Can you say amen? No time. Excuses. And in verse 19. And the other said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. And I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excuse. So while one went to the field, another is gone to the flock. To the flock. You know, all over Jamaica today, and the first, the Lord's day, you'd be surprised as to where some people are and what they're doing. Or you're not saying anything. Those who are not in their fields, whatever field it is, they are among the flock. Whatever flock it is. Today is the most appropriate day for some people to get together to socialize, to play their dominoes, to play their cards, to tell their jokes, to meet their friends, to the ne neglect of fellowship in the house of God. Oh, you don't like this message. Well, you didn't give me. The Lord gave it to me. Talk to me, somebody. Some people barely grace the house of God once per week. And say, good morning, Jesus. And then all through the week, we depend on him for new mercies. More mercy each day, traveling on the terrible highways, walking and driving among gunmen and rapists and homosexuals and lesbians and knife men and hobia workers. Do you not know that we need God's protection 24 hours a day? Do you not know that if God had not stood by many of us, some of those wickedness would have conquered us? Some of you are not saying anything. Talk to me, somebody. You'd be surprised to know what God has saved us from on a daily basis. Oh, glory to God. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. One hour on Sunday morning. Two hours on Saturday morning. Oh no. Luke 1 and verse 71. All the days of my life. Glory. Say this is where I want to be. Come on. Everybody said this is where I want to be. In the house of God. Say it again. This is where I want to be. In the house of God. 
Somebody shout something and praise him down there. Shout hallelujah in the house. Hallelujah. When we come together, all of the gifts of the God has given to the church, all of the fivefold ministry are there to minister to the believer, to strengthen to the believer, to lift up the believer, to take the devil off your back, and to send you up there for Monday morning, fired up, harmed, and dangerous, getting ready to run through your troop and to leap over your wall. You don't get all of that by yourself. I don't care how good you are. Iron sharpens iron. What care what consecrated you are. Oh, glory to God. Somebody shout something down there. Hallelujah. He went to the field. And this man went to the flock. But God's church is a place for our spiritual feast and meaningful fellowship. Can you say amen, somebody? To have other interests that relegate our spiritual well-being to a second place is a sure recipe for spiritual death. Whenever other interests Put your spiritual interest or spiritual commitment to second place. It's a sure recipe for spiritual death. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Give the field a break. Give the flock a break. Put God's interest first. God will take care of the flock. God will take care of the field. Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's and unto God that which is God's. And you cannot be wrong. Am I preaching right? I didn't say I'm preaching good, but I know I'm preaching right. Somebody praise him down there. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 tells us, it instructs us to come together for fellowship. It says, do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And so much the more as we see the day of the Lord fast approaching. Amen. These days, because of the field, because of the flock, many people are neglecting the work of God. Are you with me? And if you think that is bad, let me hasten to get to the third point. The family. And that family I submit is broad. I bring it down to the social aspects of your life and mine. Mm. Recreation, sports, free time, uh, all of them things. We need to have time for ourselves, but who, who do not support that? I do 100%, but do not take God's time for yourself. That's the problem. Are oh, you not with me? Do not take God's time to do your business. Do not take God's tithes and offering to do your business either. Oh, that's a hard one to say. Oh, no, you can't do that. You can't take God's tithes and offering and buy pretty this and pretty that and pretty the other. They won't serve you. They won't last. Because the blessings of God will not be on them. Somebody say amen, no man. When you honor God, he will honor you. Come on, somebody. When you honor God with your finances, he will bless your bread. He will bless your water. He will take away sickness from you. Exodus 25 and verse 25, that's what God says. I will bless your bread. I will bless your water. And I will keep you out of the doctor's office. I will keep you out of the hospital. I will keep you from trouble out of the courthouse. Oh, glory. God, somebody praise him. I feel the Holy Ghost touching me here. I didn't plan this, but the Holy Ghost wants me to say this. Too many people are taking God's tithes and offering to do their own thing. Especially those who are competing with others for the best this and the best that and the best the other. 
Come on, somebody. Some of you looking at me who are dressed up nice. I walked in a store in New York the other day and a man just said to me, Come, pastor, put on the suit. Take the shirt and the tie and match it and the shoes and say, Go, pastor, go preach. That's how blessed I am in New York City. He didn't hear what I said. Come on, church. Don't, don't it look good? You look good, man. Oh, yes. Store manager just said, come on, pastor. You just dress me up and send me on to preach the gospel. And all some of you saying, Jesus Christ, look how him dress up now. And you don't even know how I get it. Somebody praise him down there. My God shall supply. Lift your hand and say, oh, oh, glory. My Thank you, Jesus. We do not want to bring our time of corporate worship down to a Saturday morning and a Sunday morning only. My house must be called a house of prayer. Come on, somebody. Where are some of you on a Wednesday night? Are you in the field or are you among the flock? Where are you on a Friday night? Are you in the field or are you among your flock? Where are you? Many of you could be here in the house of God. But the fields have taken you away. The flocks have taken you away. And your time of fellowship and feasting is being denied. buy a piece of land I buy some oxen another man say marry a wife are you with me I can't leave my nice nice wife to come fellowship and feast well if you don't leave her and continue that way if you do not come with her when both of you are to come God may just do something to ruffle your feathers and your nice nice wife might start prick you your nice, nice husband start prick you. Is God ruffling your feathers? Or oh, you're not with me here? You must put God first. Tell somebody, put God first. Put God first. Your wife is not first. Your husband is not first. God is first. Do respect to every wife and every husband, but God is first. Come on, somebody. So the social life has taken away a lot of people. Fun, fellowship, recreation. Give me more, give me more, give me more. Cable television, this, that, that, the other. Internet, this, that, that, the other. Some of those things that could be used as a real blessing to the church. They have turned out to become a curse because of improper use. Oh, you're not with me? Amen. Somebody praise him down there. I can't come. Psalm 133. We know that psalm. It shows that a church enveloped in unity and fellowship, it commands a special blessing and life. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that ran down here and speared to the skirt of his garment. And further down it says, For there the Lord command the blessing, even life forevermore. Are you not with me? When a church is united, when a church is in fellowship, God commands his blessing and life in the church. Come on, somebody. But when the church puts God second place and we take first place, we are in trouble. Everybody said trouble, trouble, trouble. It's time to order our priorities. Where your greater interest lies. 
Is it in the flock? Is it in the field? Is it in the family? Or it is in the master's call for fellowship and feasting? My house, Jesus said, is a house of prayer for all people. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Do not let your flock and your family and your fields take you away from fellowship. Because verse 24 of that text, Luke chapter 14, is a hard one to read. But I read it and I close. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were invited, which were bidden, shall taste of my supper. Can you imagine? I need some more time to bring this message out properly. Can you imagine the kind of careful selection that was made for those many guests who were invited? Can you imagine the thoughtfulness that went into their selection? Can you imagine the millions of people around us in the world, billions, and the two and a half or nearly three million in Jamaica? Can you imagine the Spirit of God passed over everybody and come where you were? came where you were, laid his hand upon you, breathed his breath upon you, convert you, transform you, sanctify you, fill you with the Holy Ghost, and appoint you to serve in his kingdom. Can you imagine the kind of thoughts that went into your selection process? You have not chosen me. Oh, I would to God I have another 20 minutes to preach. You have not chosen me, said the Lord, but I have chosen you and ordained you. You did not invite me in your life, Jesus said. I invited myself in your life. I call you out from among them. I sanctify you. I fill you with my spirit. I give you the ability to pray. I give you the ability to play. I give you the ability to preach. I give you the ability to sing. I give you the ability to testify. I give you the ability to shout. I put dance in your feet. I gave you the word of wisdom. I gave you the word of knowledge. I gave you special faith. I gave you the gifts of healing. Oh, somebody help me close down this message. I need some more time for you to get it good. Oh, God of heaven. And then when I call for you, when I call for you, you tell me I marry a wife. Who gave you that wife? You told me I bought a yoke of oxen. Who blessed you so you could buy oxen? You telling me I bought a piece of land. Whose money buy the land? My coach shot up. I need some time to preach this message. And wake up some of you in this place. You come telling me what you have. I have a wife, I can't come. I have some cows, I can't come. I have real estate, I can't come. Who gave them to you? Oh, for I say unto you, none of those, none of them who were bidden shall taste my supper. They shall sit on the outside and see the maimed and the blind. I hope I'm not prophesying, please, Lord. I, I don't want to be prophesying. No, Jesus. 
Don't let me be prophesying to anybody in this church. I don't want to be prophesying. They shall see the men and the blind and the halt and the widow come in and sit. They shall see the men. People said, come in, lay him in his feet. But drag and come and feast and fellowship and they shall be left on the outside. The field, the flock, the family to the neglect of spiritual fellowship and spiritual feasting. Where do you stand? Stand with me please everybody. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and worship Him. Mm -hmm. Dear God Almighty. Hallelujah. 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 Eke Torobo Shima. Rama Mama Korobo Sete. Roko Romo Shema. Rako Torobo Sete. Oh. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take your cross and follow, follow me. Where he lives. for the Holy Spirit to this message sent by the Holy Ghost. Has God spoken to your heart? Have you heard the voice of God for salvation, for commitment, for deliverance, where he lives. Come on, worship God, worship God. Make your response. God, talk to you. This is not Pastor Davis. Holy Ghost. Where he lives. Me.
Come on, give him praise. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over every person in my audience and in the television audience now. Pray that the mighty hand of God will rest upon each person. Loose them from the field. Loose them from the flock. Bring them and the family to your place of feast and fellowship. In the name of Jesus, let them not be left behind on the maimed and the blind and the widowed and the halls. Find your way into the kingdom. Save the lost. Reclaim the backsliders. Strengthen each believer. We give you praise and glory and honor. And may somebody today say yes to you in no uncertain way. We pray that you heal the sick right now. Every sickness, every disease. We plead the blood of Jesus against them. We rebuke them by your authority. And we claim the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands, give him the highest praise. And go back to your seats, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have won the fire.